Okay, just like in IP before, that we have unicast, multicast, addresses, broadcast. Oh, no, that's right. There is no broadcast in IPv6. Another wonderful feature. All right, so no broadcast in IPv6, but we do have multicast addresses. We have unicast addresses. We have something called global unicast, which is, there is your range right here. That's why you always see me put 2001, because the range of global unicast, which are the equivalent to publicly routable addresses. Okay, okay, what happened to my notepad? Magic. Okay, I guess my hand touched the board. All right, uh, global unicast, publicly routable addresses. That's what their range is right there. It starts with 2000, 2001. 2002 really starts using for 64 tunneling. Well, transition mechanism, right? We don't want to talk about that yet. Uh, but we have that type. And we also have this new one here. This Anycast address, right? This Anycast address, which is very, very interesting. It is also called the one to nearest. One to nearest, what does that mean? Well, it comes from the range of the unicast addresses. You have to put, it's normally configured on a router, not on a host or source address or anything like that. It's usually on a router where you configure these anycast addresses. And you can put the same address on different interfaces, all right? What it does is, if you're looking for a service of a particular whatever it is based on the routing protocol it becomes the nearest let me explain if you're running rip if it takes you one hop versus three hops to get to that particular service then that one hop is the nearest okay if you're running EIGRP and you're calculating the metric well the lowest metric it could be three routers away, it could be two routers away, depending on the bandwidth, right? The K values that EIGRP uses, how they're configured. So the, the nearest address could be three routers away or two routers away. If you're using OSPF, which is based on cost, the lowest cost, right? That router may be just one router away. It could be your neighbor router. That is the nearest. So depending on the type of routing that you're doing, the metrics of the router, is what the nearest means, right? The one to nearest it means you have one address that you can place all in all these routers, the identical address on all these routers and all these interfaces, and you would end it. You put the actual IP address and then you say any cast, all right? Uh, it would be based on the routing. So that's a, one of the newest addresses that has come into play in IPv6. Very nice feature, very nice feature. The next one is the link local. We've all seen the link, lo link local, and if you haven't, go to your computers right now, go on the command prompt, and type ipconfig all. Regardless if you, I'm sure you're DHCP enabled, but whether you're DHCP enabled or not, that FE80 address will be there. That link local address is really the replacement of the APIPA, right? The automatic private IP address, that 169.254 address that we used to see only if we were DHCP enabled and we never received an IP address. Well, with the link local address, it will always be there. It will always be there, the FE80. Now, one of the things that the book doesn't really talk much about, and really you're not tested on, uh, as long as you know FE80, that's your link local address, you're good to go for the examination. But the link local address, if you have a multi-home computer, if you have multiple NIC cards on your computer, and, you have a, and you're running IPv6, or an operating system that, that supports IPv6, and uh, you'll have an FE80 on each one of those NIC cards. So how does it know where to send the information? Or when you're pinging, how do you know which link local you want to ping? Well, there's at the end of the link local address, because remember, it's 128 bits, just like any IPv6 address. At the end of it, there's something, a percent and a number, percent 10, percent 15, percent 20, whatever it is. Right, and you would, it's called, that percent and the number is called a zone ID. So in order to ping out of that particular NIC card through that FE80 address, you would need to use that zone ID so it knows where it needs to go. Okay, that's what that percent, just a little extra info, if you didn't know, that's what it's called, zone ID. But as far as for the CCNA exam, 
As long as you know your FD80 is your link local address, is the replacement for the APIPA, you're good to go, no, no worries. The next one doesn't even look like an address. All you have are two double colons, all right? Well, why is that? Because they're all zeros. So you truncated it to two double colons. That's perfectly valid. That is a valid IPv6 address, two double colons. One though, right? You don't, <laughs> you don't see two, there's only one double colon. And that's the same thing as using 0.0.0.0 and IPv4, it's like a default route, right? All zeros, all zeros. Then we have a loopback where he talked about the loopback address. There's only one loopback, only one loopback in IPv6. And the good thing with IPv6, you see all these different type of addresses that we were just mentioning. You can put each and every one of them on the same interface. You can put a multicast address with FF on an interface. Let's say the F00, just to the fast Ethernet 00. You can put a multicast, a unicast, a global, or an anycast, a link local. Well, the link local is already there. You can put any one of those types of addresses on there. You can put multiple addresses on an interface for, with IPv6, something that we weren't able to do with IPv4. And I don't know if you recall, with IPv4, they tried what's called that secondary IP address. Didn't work too well, and they didn't advise it. So that's why we never used it, rarely. All right, but with IPv6, that story changes. If need be, you can put all those addresses in one interface. Now, there's a reason, though, at the bottom, you see the three routing protocols that you need to be aware of as well. Those are the IPv6 versions of RIP, EIGRP, and OSPF. You need to, and if you see FF, what does that mean? It's a multicast address. There is no more broadcast. Broadcast does not exist and IPv6. There's no ARP broadcast, there's no broadcast whatsoever, period. So even though uh, uh, in IP version 4, the routing protocols used multicast addresses to send their updates to their neighboring routers, but they were in dotted decimal format. You need to know, you need to know the IPv6 version of those addresses. Where in IPv4, RIP version 2 was 224.009, and IPv6 is FF02 colon colon 9. All right, with EIGRP, it was 224.0010, and IPv6 is FF02 colon colon A, because 10 is equivalent to A in hexadecimal. And then OSPF version 3, 224, 005, or 006. And IPv6 is FF02, 5, and 6. And remember, again, not giving stuff away for, for future lessons, but something that needs to be said. OSPF does use two addresses. The only time that it's using the 6 is when it's sending information towards the designated router or backup designated router. But when we get to those lessons, You'll, uh, you'll understand what we're talking about. So these are the types of addresses that we use. Anycast really being one of the newest and most interesting out of all the addresses because it's the one to nearest. And again, it's looking based, the nearest based on the metric of whatever routing protocol you're using. Okay, so that's one of the newest ones and it comes from the unicast address, the top 128 addresses, okay? So there they are in all their glory. Uh, pretty much the same, just again, looking at hexadecimal numbers, all right? And uh, the other special one, I guess, would be the FE80 that replaced the link local. You can route somewhat with this. Something goes beyond the scope of the book. But again, you need to know, uh, really, you don't need to know the prefix of it. If you do, that's wonderful. Uh, what you need to really know is this right here, the FE80, the F00, the 2000, 2001, uh, and the FF that is a multicast. Because when you get tested and you're looking for, hey, which of the following are multicast or which of the following is the link local, they'll throw in multicast or unicast and they'll throw the link local and they'll throw something else in there. And you need to know how to pick it. So be careful with that. As long as you know this portion of the address and what that does, what it is, you should be fine. Okay? All right, guys, this is it. I'll see you in the next session.